Being on the front lines in the fight to educate the next generation is tough. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with important updates, encouragement, and connection. Welcome to the Institute Leaders Lifeline. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Institute Leaders Lifeline. My name is Mike Sinclair, Deputy Superintendent of School Support at the Charter Institute at Erskine. I'm so glad that you joined us for this episode. It's episode 17. It is in the middle of our series on stress and anxiety. We started this in episode 13. So if you haven't listened to the prior episodes, I would encourage you to go back and pick those up. I'm going to give you a little bit of a summary in just a minute of where we are. But first, I do want to shout out our new Institute Student Ambassadors. We'd love for you to join our social media at Erskine Charters to find out more about these new ambassadors and the ambassador program as a whole. Great students, and they do a fantastic job of representing their school, the Institute, and lots of opportunities, even going over across the street from our office to the state capitol and representing all of the charter school students in South Carolina as we look for funding and different changes there. So big role and responsibility for these students. Check them out and support them as they represent our Institute. Now, on with this week's episode. As I said, we started in episode 13. So I wanna go through some of the strategies, some of the things we've talked about as we, as leaders, face stress and anxiety. I repeat this every week, but it's always important to keep in front of us. To, to start this conversation with is, stress and anxiety is gonna be part of the job. I was listening to a podcast today as I was driving to Columbia, and the uh, host said, stress is not a bad thing. A certain uh, mixture of stress is actually a good thing. We need a little bit of that you stress. We need a little bit of that motivation. It makes us better. It pushes us to do great things. It's when it tips over to distress is when it becomes negative and actually hinders our health and our productivity. So let's talk about some of those strategies we've looked at already in this series. Number one, self-awareness. You need to be able to pay attention to your body, to your mind. What happens when you feel stress coming on? What happens when something is introduced into your environment, either physical environment or mental environment, that, that causes you stress? How does that feel? Because once you can recognize that feeling, then you know to implement some of these strategies. The first ones we talked about are a lot more reactive. As we've gone through the last two weeks, they're more proactive. So let's talk about a couple of those reactive strategies. One, breathing. When you slow your breathing down and you become conscious of your breathing, it puts your uh, uh, focus on something that is physical, something you're controlling. It's giving you something to slow yourself down, become more mindful of your environment and your awareness. We talked about strategies like uh, seven seconds of inhale, five seconds of holding your breath, four seconds of exhale, or you could reverse that, or a four, 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 and then hold your exhale for four seconds. That gives you time to slow down and think, slow down and focus on the current situation, not all of the what ifs, not all the scenarios. The second thing we talked about was your awareness of your physical environment. Remember we had the apple, the stress ball, uh, per se, something that you could physically manipulate. Again, it's bringing your mind to that physical manipulation of something, something that you're controlling, something that is tangible, something that is present. We also talked about looking for things in your environment, things that you see, things that you can touch, things that you hear. Again, it's anchoring you in your physical environment instead of in all of the what ifs that stress and anxiety can take us to. Last week, we interviewed Reagan McCullough and Reagan talked about the mind and body connection. She gave us some very uh, good advice, some very good strategies on how to build in physical uh, fitness or physical movement. She talked about calf raises actually being uh, helpful in lowering our stress and making us a little bit more healthy. Something simple, but it's better than not doing anything. She also talked about food and how different foods, whether it's fat or it's carbs or it's protein, can be used in our diet at different times, depending on what we feel, 
how we are feeling at that moment. So go back and listen to last episode if you haven't, and listen to some of those strategies that Reagan gives us for our mind and body connection, because if, if, if you don't believe that those are connected, our mental health and our physical health, you are absolutely missing the boat. I guarantee you there is a direct correlation. Even if there's not a causality, certainly a correlation there. So I encourage you to go and check the last episode out to get some of those strategies that Reagan shared with us. Now today, I wanna to focus on gratitude. Gratitude, it's that, it's that mindset. It's, it's being thankful for something, being um, mindful of our impact, uh, having that positive approach to life. I always like definitions when we introduce an idea like this because sometimes we can interpret uh, terms and, and, and ideas in different ways. So uh, I looked up gratitude and of course it said the act of being grateful. It seems kind of redundant. So, so I looked up grateful. Grateful, the definition in Webster's dictionary is appreciative of benefits received. Appreciative of benefits that we've gotten, things that have uh, been given to us, things that we gather, that we come in contact, just being appreciative of those things. You know, there's a speaker and he wrote a book, uh, John Gucci Foley. I've referenced him in some earlier episodes, but he was a solo pilot with the Blue Angels. And, and we were fortunate as charter schools, uh, many of us, to hear him speak at the Kids First Conference two years ago. And he wrote a book called Fearless success. And in there, he describes his, uh, his program, his approach to uh, life that's based on uh, the, deb the debriefing of the Blue Angels, and it's glad to be here. They, they incorporate that into all their meetings before they share, glad to be here. It's that mindset, it's that attitude of being glad, being thankful, having gratitude for every moment that you come into. So if you haven't seen any of John Foley, he goes by Gucci, that was his call sign, and in his book he talks about how he got that. It's a great story, uh, call sign. Uh, but check that out, I'll link it, Fearless Success in the notes, so you can go and find that book there. But glad to be here. Are you full of gratitude? Do you approach your day with gratitude? What he would suggest, and what he does suggest, is every morning before your feet hit the ground, you wake up, you're in bed. Before your feet hit the ground, is the first thought out of your mind something that you are grateful for? Some type of gratitude? This is a challenge sometimes because, you know, we're, our mind's already racing. We're already solving problems. We're making lists. We're doing all of those things. But he challenges us to say, before your feet hit the ground in the morning, focus on something you're grateful for. Fill your mind with gratitude. Start with that idea before anything else enters your mind. Now, that's an easy concept to agree with. Oh yeah, Mike, that's, a, that, that's great. That is exactly a, a good idea. That's a good strategy. But it's hard to adopt that when you're in the middle of the heat of the moment. Uh, a lot of times we take our mental health for granted, this dealing with stress and anxiety for granted. When things are good, we don't think about it. We only think about it when we're in the middle of that stress and the anxiety and the angst of the moment. And man, oh man, it is really hard to change at that point because you're, you're not creating a habit only, creating that habit, you're also fighting your default habit at the same time. And that's really difficult. So if you're in the heat of that moment, you're full of that stress or that anxiety, or maybe you're in a, a season of some depression, I challenge you to uh, use some of these strategies. Uh, if you need to get help with a counselor, I encourage you to do that. But today I'm gonna give you some strategies to be a little more proactive uh, before those things happen in the season of good. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be intentional. I've used that word a lot in this uh, podcast is intentional, purposeful. You have to plug in those behaviors in order to develop the, the habits uh, that we know as leaders to be successful. So how do you build that uh, habit of gratitude, that habit of being positive in your thoughts, being thankful. Well, one idea that we've talked about that I'm gonna use today is uh, habit stacking. Uh, a lot of it comes from uh, the book, uh, Atomic Habits. 
Uh, we've linked that in prior show notes. I can link it uh, in this show notes as well so you can find it. But habit stacking, it's an idea of finding an anchor habit, something that, that, that you're gonna do, you, you, you have to do it, and then building uh, around that. Last week, Reagan McCullough shared with us one time to build around is opening a door. Uh, I've got a door over here in the studio. And, and so she was talking about every time you open a door, think of three positive thoughts. You're gonna open a door throughout the day. You're, you're, you're going in or out of an office or a building or you're opening your car door or you're going to the bathroom, something like that. And you're opening a door. Every time you open a door, think of three positive thoughts about yourself. Something simple could start, or it could start with something simple like, I'm enough. I don't have to be anything more for anyone else. I am enough. I am worthy of success. Sometimes we feel like we don't deserve the success that comes in our life, so we're constantly looking for problems. But you're worthy of success. So, so one could be, I am enough. I am worthy of success. And the third one, I make a difference in others even though I might not see it. I make a difference in others, even though I may not see it. So that's three short, simple, generic thoughts that, that, that you might have when you open those doors. Habit stacking, you're gonna open doors, why not tag it with something intentional, some thoughts that you want to. My three that I've been thinking through over the last few days, honestly, since I talked to Reagan in that interview uh, recording, but, but, but these, this last period of time is one, my impact is important to people outside of the room I'm in. So when I go out of that door, I make an impact. So I have to know that that's in front of me. My second one is I'm good enough to be a leader, a father, a husband, and I make a difference in those I care about. Sometimes I can, I, I can beat myself up and say, I'm really not good enough. Almost like that imposter syndrome, like, man, people think that I do good work, but they just don't know. They don't understand me. It's that imposter syndrome. Maybe that's a good topic for a future episode, but I focus, I'm trying to focus one of those thoughts on, I am good enough to be that leader. The last one I've been thinking about, and it's a key word in this one I'll point out is, I am a warrior in the battle against things that work against me. The word warrior, I wanna think of myself as I can attack those things that stand against me. I have the power to do something about them. I am not a victim that they do something to me. So that's why the word warrior in some of my affirmations uh, pops up a lot is I am active. I have the weapons, the strategies to do something about those uh, things, the thoughts, the people, the situations that stand against me. I am a warrior. I can do something about it. So those are my thoughts. So you can stay simple to start off. I am enough. I am worthy. I make a difference. But then build it into some of your own. Think of what are trigger words for you that make you feel important, that make you feel powerful in your thoughts. Another habit, habit stacking uh, idea with affirming uh, thoughts or thoughts of gratitude is when you pick up your phone in the morning, do you go straight to your social media, which is gonna be mixed, positive and negative, stress or laughter, it's gonna be mixed in there. Do you look at something that brings you gratitude, that makes you thankful, that is affirming to you? I challenge you, before your phone dictates your thoughts, have something on your phone that you control. That's a great way. There are apps to do that. You could put a screen, a lock screen uh, on there that has a, a phrase or a quote that, that is affirming to you. So challenge you to that. Habit stacking. You're going to look at your phone. Why not build gratitude, thankfulness around that? Another one is put a sticky note in your car. When we get in our car, a lot of times, that's a lot of thought. That is time that we get lost in our thought. So put a sticky note. It has affirmations on it. It has thoughts of gratitude. It has a quote on there that, that, that drives you to positive, affirming thoughts. If you're gonna be in the car driving, which you're going to be, why not use it to continue to build that habit? It's intentional. It's building the habit when you are not in the storm so that when you get in the storm, you already have a behavior that's strong. So a sticky note in the car. So those are just some of the strategies Easy, it's built around, you're gonna open a door, you're gonna check your phone, you're gonna drive your car. Think of other things that you might have it stack on that isn't automatic, it's being intentional. It might seem a little contrived at first, 
but that's okay. That's where you build in those habits. Attach it to things that you're gonna do anyway. Now for me, I'm gonna give you a quote from, you've heard me quote this gentleman a lot, Dr. Rick Rigsby. When I'm in the middle of battle, battling stress and anxiety, and, and, and I've shared that before, I shared it last week, I have gone through seasons of pretty significant stress and anxiety and depression. Uh, I think about this quote from Dr. Rigsby, and I haven't memorized it, so it's not quoted in my head, but, but I do wanna share it to you. So I'm gonna read it off my screen to make sure that I give you the quote as he said it, or as he wrote it, really. It comes from his lessons from a third grade dropout. It's his father talking to him after he lost his wife. Uh, I won't tell you the details. If you haven't read the book or haven't heard him speak, I don't wanna uh, steal his, his story there. It's, it, it's very emotional, very uh, powerful. But he lost his wife. And so his, his father is talking to him as now he's grieving his wife and he is trying to parent his, his sons, his children. He said, his father said, son, there will always be people in life who rub you the wrong way. Some you'll work with, others you'll work for. Make every effort to respect them. Make every effort to learn something from them. Son, sometimes you have to just stand. Sometimes you have to just hold firm, knowing you will get through whatever it is. If you're in that moment of battle, you're in that mental toughness, you got your stress and anxiety, I wanna look at those last two sentences again. Or some, sometimes you have to just stand. Sometimes you just have to hold firm, knowing that you will get through whatever it is. The storms are gonna come. Just stand, be the warrior, be the victor, stand firm. You are strong enough, you will make it through, but sometimes you need to just focus on standing. Don't worry about all the other things, just stand. There's a lot of strategies to help you focus on great being grateful and gratitude. I just encourage you, be intentional, create habits during positive seasons so that you're prepared for those negative seasons. You will develop an attitude of gratitude. That will become your default. There will be stress and anxiety, but if you have the attitude to be grateful, thankful, affirm yourself through your thoughts, you will do great things. You will weather those storms. You will have the strength to just stand because you are strong enough and those around you need you to be that person and be that leader. Thank you for joining me on this journey of collective leadership. I hope you've learned some strategies over these last few weeks on how to deal with stress and anxiety. We're in that journey together, I promise you. So in the coming week, take care of yourself and take care of your team. Be sure to follow the Institute on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. At Erskine Charters, we'll have all of these resources, including this podcast, many stories of our schools, and other things. So check us out. The opinions expressed within the content are solely the authors and do not reflect the opinions and beliefs of the Charter Institute at Erskine or its affiliates.